Hi everybody, I'm John and this is, I think perhaps the first I've seen in, uh, anyway, third section Steadicam arm for small setups. So instead of the big G70, this is a three section A30 or Zephyr arm. And uh, on here I've got an FS7, normal Steadicam setup otherwise, and it flies just the same, except you can go higher and you can go lower and you have a bit more absorption of body movement. Hello everyone, I'm John Fry and I'm out here again with uh, yet another little Steadicam experiment. So as you probably all know, Steadicams come with an arm which takes out all of the up and down movement of people walking and uh, you know smooths out the shot. That's the fundamentals of what keeps the isolation from you and the camera, okay? So what Tiffin did a few years ago was release a third section for the big arm, for the big G70 arm, and that mounted at the back of the exo vest. So the arm, instead of inserting here and going out to the front, it inserted at the back, and it came all the way around. You had three sections to play with, which was, you know, very exciting, uh, potentially of limited sort of use uh, day to day, but as uh, many Steadicam operators do, I have a spare Steadicam. So uh, as the arms majoritively these days are sectional and you know, without much know-how you can, you can dismantle them. So I have, <laughs> just for fun, made my own third section um, A30 arm, or Zephyr arm actually, some of it is. So um, I haven't really played with this yet, so I'm going to attempt to uh, fly this FS7 and my custom Archer rig on here and see what, if any, benefits a third section Steadicam arm have. So as you can see, there's three sections there. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? But um, as I say, not entirely sure what the benefits might be. So let's have a test and see what it does. So I'm gonna start. <laughs> I'm already finding I'm having to stand slightly further away. There we go. Okay. So here we have our third section Steadicam arm. Oh, it's a bit um, stiff, that centre section. Must not be quite at the same strength as the others. Okay, so immediately we, we can see uh, a drawback, which is I'm that bit wider to go through doorways, unless I physically wrangle all of the arm sections together. Um, we can go higher, so I can go right above my head to get the camera for those extreme high shots. And with the tilt head I have on here, I can go extreme high and still tilt down onto the subject. So looking, for example, an over shoulder shot following somebody, or if I was down in low mode, I could get really low and tilt up with the head. So I'd retain the control I have and a completely vertical center post, which is what you always want really. So a tilt head makes this more useful. Now, how about going down? So down here, I can actually extend further than my arms can reach uh, downwards. So that's, that's quite a lot more travel. Oh, there's definitely a stickiness to that center section I put in. But it does mean that what would be your traditional top end of the Steadicam means I've still got a massive amount of bounce left in the thing. So, Let's just roll on this for a minute. So I'm gonna just uh, roll the camera and point it out into the field there and I'm gonna do what would be a normal run. I'm gonna stabilize it a little bit. Um, now I'm not, I'm not particularly ninja walking or ninja running. I'm just seeing if this extra section, which it should, takes out even more of my visible footsteps. Oh, it's a bit windy for this actually, this experiment. Um, because when I'm, when I'm walking along, the third section should give extra, extra stability, extra isolation from my movements getting to the camera. In terms of operation, uh, 
everything is still the same. I've got the same freedom of movement. I've got the same beautiful smoothness and control of the gimbal there. Um, I'm not inhibited, except a little bit perhaps because when I'm in front because the arm sections, you know, there's more of them. So, <laughs> so they actually sort of get in the way a bit more perhaps. But again, if they were mounted at the back, if I had an exo vest with a small vest fitting here, um, small arm fitting on the back, that you know, extra space would be negated a little bit. Um, but even so, I don't think there's any massive um, drawbacks to having that in, in terms of spatial awareness, or at least in terms of, uh, you know, how easy this is to operate. You know, it's, it's exactly the same as a two section arm. You just take up a tiny little bit more space in and of yourself and the rig. But yeah, you've got added height, you've got added depth. Um, so that alone is worth it, I should think, on a lot of occasions. You may have seen my video where I've put a FX6 on a gimbal on the top of here. Um, and I suppose you're wondering what, what John, would be the benefits of adding a third section arm to that setup? And I would have to say, I think the benefits are entirely negligible because you've already got floor to ceiling boom range on that setup um, with the gimbal on. So adding a second or uh, adding a third section to the arm with that, uh, with that setup, I don't think would add anything. Um, I mean, there is that extra smoothness perhaps as you're going along. If you had to do a hard run, for example, through a field with a with a heavier setup, then yeah, perhaps if it's really, really uneven ground, you've got to do some really hard footsteps because you know you're tired at the end of the day, the extra section there might just make the difference um, in absolute smoothness or killing the the visible footsteps that you see uh, on in steady cam shots occasionally. Uh, but yeah, for the extra, I mean, there's no extra faff really either. It's once it's there, it's there. You can just leave it assembled and it's not actually that difficult to disassemble and go back to a standard two section arm. Um, I'll see if there's a job coming up that I can use this on that, that where it would be, you know, suitable for this experiment uh, to see, you know, see if it actually adds anything. Um, I can see already though that without back mounting it, I am, I am taking up physically more room. But still, that's today's experiment. Third section A30 or third section Zephyr arm. Um, this is actually a Zephyr and an A30 put together, but they're essentially the same thing. Um, and yeah, it seems to, seems to work okay. Let's do another another experiment. So I'm doing really hard footsteps towards you. Okay, so final thoughts. Uh, we've had a had a look at that, and I've had a play with it. And yeah, operationally, it's exactly the same, except a bit more width. I take up a bit more physical space. Um, I think looking at the sort of the test I did there, looking at the at the horizon. This does actually absorb a bit more of my body movement, my lateral movement up and down um, and isolate it from the camera a little bit more, um, which could be certainly useful in certain situations where I don't know you've got a really hard run or you've got a really uneven ground or it's the end of the day and you're absolutely flagging and you just cannot get the smoothness that you did at the beginning of the day. Um, be interesting to see what you can use it for. Um, I'm more interested and in the you know the height the extra height and, and and lower the extra range really the extra boom range you've got because i think that actually will enable different shots you can get with this um, and of course with a heavier setup than i can get on my steadicam gimbal hybrid so yeah be interesting to see um any thoughts please uh, please like and comment and all those sort of things I have to tell you to, to do. And uh, this has been John. Thanks very much.